in this video, we're throwing it right back to yesteryear, where I'm going to be testing clubs from a variety of decades, from 1940s all the way up to the 1970s. As Golf Monthly Technical Editor, I test a lot of modern day equipment, but I've never actually hit clubs from that sort of era, so I thought it would be a really fun test. But before we get into the test, I need to remind you, if you're new to the Golf Monthly YouTube channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our equipment review videos. And if you like what you're watching, do click the like button. So I think it's about time we have a look inside the bag that I'm going to be using today. Right, so now I'm going to talk you through the clubs in my bag. This is a full set of McGregor clubs, very similar to the ones that Jack Nicklaus himself would have used in the mid 1970s, right the way from putter all the way up to driver. These are the actual models, not the same exact clubs, but the same models he would have used. So starting with the driver, this is a beautiful looking thing. It is a uh, McGregor 945W. It's a Tommy Armour signature driver. It's got this beautiful cherry finish on it. Obviously it's a persimmon club. It's got a plastic insert here with the six screws inside to protect the wood. Uh, we've got a lovely vinyl whipping here on the hosel and obviously we've got a steel shaft because it's a club from the 1970s. Not the original grip but still um, a very beautiful old school club nonetheless. Um, this is a one wood, it's around about nine degrees. Um, three wood similar in concept uh, to the driver in terms of obviously it's a club, nice sole plate and the screws on the face to match the driver. Moving on to the irons, we have the uh, McGregor VIPs. Now these were kind of originally launched in the mid 1960s. They're kind of the first kind of muscle back. You can see there's an extra bit of meat behind the hitting area here. So this was kind of the first design kind of offered that. And I've got it in two iron all the way up to, uh, well, sandwich really. It's like kind of like a full set. I've also got a McGregor MT one iron and I've got it in the original Tawny Taper McGregor shafts, which will be interesting. Not the original grips, but I do have um, a slightly older seven iron, one of the first seven irons that Jack Nicklaus used when he came out on tour that does show the original kind of leather wrap grips that he used on these clubs. And it's a very tacky feeling, very interesting feeling. It's why a lot of golfers back in back then didn't use a glove because they were so tacky. And finally, we have the putter. Now, this is a replica of the putter that Jack Nicklaus would have used for 20 odd years. It's a George Lowe 600 by McGregor, absolutely beautiful looking club. It's got a kind of the original leather grip and it does have a flat front to it. So, you know, there was some thought gone into the putting grips at this time, but absolutely no technology on the face whatsoever. It's a completely flat face. So be interesting to see how this rolls on the greens today. And then finally, the most important thing arguably is the golf ball. So we have a few different golf balls here. We've got the Dunlop 65. Now these are the kind of uh, the full size. You can see that says large size here on the back. So 168. That's the size, the diameter that uh, golf balls are today. But I also have a couple of these ones. So these are the uh, 162. So these are the small balls that were used back then. I think they're outlawed in the 1990s, around about that time for competitions. But I think it'd be fun to give them a try. Before we go on the golf course, we're going to hit some of these clubs on the launch monitor uh, to see exactly how they compare with modern day clubs, you know, where the big differences in performance lie. I think it'd be a really interesting test. So let's go and find out. Right, time to hit the big dog, the driver. I actually just pulled the three wood by mistake. They're that small and similar. Uh, it's an easy mistake to make, but I mean, first impressions obviously down behind the ball are that it is an incredibly small head. Uh, it looks about half the size of my current driver. Proof is in the pudding, let's give it a hit. It's, I think it's about 43 inches long, so obviously a bit shorter than my current driver, which should help. Oh, the sound of that is beautiful. I've absolutely smoked that. Lovely, kind of quiet sound. I actually felt surprisingly solid out of the middle there. Ball speed is down from where I, I usually am. Uh, that was 142.4 miles an hour ball speed. So not the quickest, but still an enjoyable club to hit. I think I want to hit a few more. Right, so a quick look at the launch monitor data we got from the uh, Foresight Sports GC quad, starting with the McGregor VIP 7-iron. 
Um, ball speed of 107.5 is obviously lower than where I usually am uh, with my current day 7i. And it's launching really high 18 and a half. Uh, but the big number to talk about here is the spin. It's spinning at 8,200, which is an incredibly high spinning iron. Actually, the peak height of 27 yards is quite low. So it's obviously kind of spinning a lot. So it's climbing quite a lot through the air, um, which is why the carry distance is right down at 141 yards on average. But the feel of it, I was really impressed with the feel of it out of the middle. It's buttery, buttery soft. And I didn't feel like the dispersion was all over the place at all. It was a little bit to the left, average four yards left, but generally uh, was an enjoyable club to hit actually. But moving on to the one iron. Now for me, this was a big surprise. I hit this surprisingly well, considering how small it is, both from heel to toe and also kind of back to front. It's a very small, compact one iron. It launched the ball incredibly low, 7.3 degrees, spinning lowish at 3,000, just over 3,000. Um, an average carry of 206 yards, but that was actually surprisingly impressive given you know how much the ball is going to run when it lands. So you're probably going to get another 20, 30 yards of chase there. So a very impressive performer that one on. I'm looking forward to trying it out on the golf course. Very useful into the wind, no question. And then the driver, this McGregor kind of 945W, uh, average ball speed of 145 and a half miles an hour. That's more than I was expecting it to be, to be honest. Launching at nine degrees, which is the same as the static loft we've got on this club, and spinning at 2.3, which is kind of a little bit higher than where I am currently with my driver, but it's not far off. It was a lot lower than I was expecting. Um, very low ball flight, 21 yards peak height. An average carry of 231, so it is down significantly. Uh, did miss to the left a little bit. Obviously, you know, this hasn't been custom fitted for me. I think the thing that surprised me about this was the feel of it. You know, at the middle, it feels really crisp. When you hit it out of the screws, pardon the pun, it does feel really, really good. And as I am with the one iron, excited to go and try them out on the golf course. So I was thinking about the time we went and did just that. Okay, so I don't know if you just saw that shot there, but just something to kind of point out with these old school clubs is the size and depth of the divot that you take because of this, look how sharp this leading edge is here on the face. You know, it, the turf interaction is so different. It's absolutely dead flat, that sole. With the sharp leading edge, you know, if you catch the ball ever so slightly heavy, you're gonna just literally chunk it 10 yards in front of you. Luckily, I hit that okay, but you did have to be a lot more precise on your strike with these old school clubs. Okay, so that was the modern day Pro V1 and I'm pretty happy with that shot, struck it pretty well. But now it's time to play a few holes and switch into the Dunlop 65. Now this is a 162, so this is the smaller size golf ball uh, compared to the modern day golf ball. So let's see how this plays out on the course. If anything, it makes the uh, driver head look bigger, which can never be a bad thing given how small it is. Struck that pretty well as well. A little bit higher. Let's go and see where it finished. Okay, so here is where my drive with the modern Pro V1 X golf ball and the old driver finished. And you'll see back down there, just 16 yards behind it, is where the old Dunlop 65, the smaller one with the old driver, finished. Um, both struck them both really, really well actually, right out of the middle of the club face. And 16 yards, you know, I was expecting a little bit more of a difference, especially considering how kind of dead the Dunlop 65, the smaller ball, does feel. That said, it did seem to go fly pretty well. The flight was pretty similar. And given there's 50 years between them, I'd say 16 yards is a fairly small amount.
Right, okay, so that concludes my test of using these classic clubs from the 1950s and 60s. And there's a lot of you out there, myself included, that might think that using a set of clubs like this with really tiny headed persimmon drivers and classic muscle back blades that are really, really compact behind the ball would be impossible to hit. But actually, I found them surprisingly playable out on the golf course. And there's a couple of areas of using this bag of clubs I actually preferred over my current set of clubs. The first is the fact that because these heads are so small, it really does focus your attention on the strike. And for a lot of golfers, that is a really good thing to do. You think about these massive headed drivers we get these days, you know, basically you just think about hitting it really hard because you know you've got a lot of technology um, to help you out, but really the strike is the most important thing. And if you strike these clubs out the middle, we've seen out on the course that the performance isn't that far short of where modern golf clubs are. The other thing I really like about using these clubs was the feel. The feel of them was fantastic. It was very, very different to modern day clubs, which feel really, really fast and hot. You know, these feel soft, buttery, controlled, even the driver, it was a very, very different sensation, um, but it's definitely one I enjoyed. Yes, there are some drawbacks in that you are losing fairly significant distance with a club like this and forgiveness as well off centre. You know, the margin for error on strike on all of these clubs is a lot smaller, but if you're a good ball striker, you know, there is pleasure to be had by using a set of clubs like these, especially if you combine it with a modern day golf ball. Combine it with a golf ball from the past, like this Dunlop 65 uh, from 40, 50 years ago. For me, that is a step too far. You combine those two together, you're losing out considerably. This ball especially, felt a little bit dead on most shots, but especially around the green um, with the wedge shots, felt like I had to hit chip shots twice as hard to get to the ball, to the hole with this, uh, with this ball. So maybe that is a step too far. Um, there are some traditionalists out there, no doubt uh, would enjoy using a ball like this. Uh, and that smaller version, which I've got here, um, there are some positives and negatives about it. Obviously, the fact the ball is smaller makes the club head look bigger. But for me, the fact that it was smaller just meant it was a bit more intimidating to hit. So wasn't a fan of the uh, smaller Dunlop golf ball, but you know, the clubs themselves, uh, very impressed. You know, you've got to be careful with these wedges around the green and the, the irons as well. The design of the sole means there's no bounce on these. The leading edge is so sharp. So you will find yourself taking some very chunky, deep divots with these irons. But the other thing I did like about these irons was that you could maneuver the ball flight a lot easier. You could kind of hit left to right, right to left draws, much more easily with these muscle back irons. And like I mentioned earlier, if you're on it with your ball striking, I think you will see the benefits and you're not really losing significant distance. You know, with irons, we were talking about 10% from the launch one at the testing we did earlier. Um, so you are losing out a little bit, but you are gaining in other areas like feel uh, and sound and things like that. And on the greens, you know, with the putter, I really do, don't feel like you're losing a great deal with this putter with no technology in the face, felt like the ball came off a lot faster. So actually you use a short and more controlled stroke with this. It was a little bit loud off the face, um, but I actually found it pretty easy to putt with, even with the kind of the old school grip there. So, you know, there are some highlights within this set that maybe are a lot closer to modern day clubs than you might think. And there are some other clubs that were a little bit further back. Another club that I really, really enjoyed hitting was the one iron. This is a fantastic club, especially into the wind. You know, if you want to hit those Tiger Woods stingers, you know, this is the club that's going to do that. Yes, it's not the most forgiving of clubs, but it really was a joy to hit. And it's not really a club that's out there anymore. You know, I've got a mod one iron in my bag at the moment, but it's the Titleist U510 and it gets the ball up in the air really easily. Uh, this is a very different offering uh, to that, but there are some golfers, you know, play a lot of links golf. You want to keep the ball flight down. This is going to deliver that. And, you know, I really enjoyed this club. So guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video uh, and make sure if you are interested, you check out the Persimmon Golf Society Facebook page that has all sorts of information on a whole variety of different classic clubs. Uh, and if you've got some classic clubs that you want restoring, you can do that through that Facebook page as well. So all the information will be on there. That's where we've got these clubs from and really, really enjoyed the experience. So if you like what you're watching, make sure you click the like button and comment on the video as well. Tell me what you thought about this video and do you have any really old clubs in your bags from the 1950s and 60s? that you still use and you really enjoy. I'd love to hear from you. But for now, from Burley Park Golf Club here in Stamford, it's goodbye.